Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward. I'm clearly not Lisa Farr. My name is Anne Cooper. I'm a coffee roasting consultant, trainer and roaster based in Melbourne, Australia. And I've been given the amazing opportunity to take over the series while Lee is at Coffee Fest in New York. Now this is the first in a series of five videos and when trying to think of a topic, I kept coming back to one of the most common things I get asked by roasters when I'm consulting and training. And that's something based around something I like to call beyond the cooling tray. It's all the things that we wonder and we, I guess, worry about in terms of how do I know I'm doing okay? Am I on the right track? How do I set myself up for success every time I roast? So what I'd like to do then is put together some um, tips and tricks and some really good information that will help you guys with your roasting. But before we do that, how about just a little bit about myself? So I've been in the coffee industry for more than 25 years now. And I first started as I was a typical university student straight out of school, just working in a cafe. Um, I started in the kitchen, washing dishes, and then started learning how to make pizza and pasta, all that kind of fun stuff. And then one night front of house didn't turn up for work. So they looked at me and naturally went, well, you're the most logical person to go out the front, off you go. So out I went um, and started learning how to obviously um, take orders, um, you know, set tables, deliver food, make drinks. And that also meant learning how to make coffee. So that's where I first had my scary introduction to um, making coffee, especially I'll never forget the first time steaming milk and burning myself on the steam wand and just thinking, oh my goodness, what is this, this coffee making business? But I quickly learned that this coffee making business is something that I really loved. And more than anything, I was very attracted to the instant results part of this coffee making business. Because as we all know, there's nothing more satisfying than a customer giving us an order and we get to make it and give it to them exactly as, they, as they've asked and they're really happy. So we're happy because they're, they're happy everyone's happy. So I continued to pursue um, more coffee focused roles um, after starting that, that initial uh, introduction into coffee making and ironically ended up back at university but working on the coffee carts and these coffee carts were high volume, very fast paced, um, definitely doing the same thing over and over again and having that opportunity to be able to repeat and do things over and over again I believe really allowed me to um, really hone my skill as a barista um, and really learn some great skills in terms of organizing and um, the, the skill of taking on that order and delivering it to the customer as efficiently um, as possible. Um, and yeah, it was just great fun. Um, as a result of that fast paced environment, there was also an opportunity to start training other team members. Um, so training then starts naturally becoming a part of that, of that role. So having felt that I'd reached a bit of a ceiling with working on the coffee carts and that high volume, I started to seek more opportunities within, um, actual cafes. Um, like, the, so moving back into a cafe environment, um, also meant, um, doing more training and more management. So then learning how to manage people and you quickly realize as um, being potentially the best barista, are you necessarily the best person to manage people? So again, great opportunities to learn in terms of training and management um, in those cafe situations. Um, lots of high volume, but also opportunities to meet um, other people in terms, especially suppliers. Suppliers are great people with great connections. So for me, um, dealing with the coffee supplier meant that they saw that I really enjoyed training. They then offered me the opportunity to start working with them, training their clients. Um, so I started working training um, with a, a large coffee company, um, became an accredited trainer, trainer, 
doing the prepare and serve certificate for uh, barista training here in Australia. And that also then meant taking on one of their bigger clients, which was a franchise client. So now I'd moved from starting in a kitchen, washing dishes, making pizza and pasta, working my way through all the different roles and, and levels as a barista to now working in more of a corporate environment, um, working in franchising um, and um, learning another element, another aspect of business training and management. So fabulous lessons learnt, but part of me was also still yearning again that that hands-on interaction uh, working with coffee. So I decided to get involved in the barista competitions and I ended up doing quite well. I was my uh, regional or Queensland champion from 06 to 08. And as a result, again, you meet fabulous people, um, often whether it's somebody watching you from another company, um, whether it's someone that's, that's consistently judged you and knows your story really well. But the barista competitions also, of course, um, mean that we need to know more about the green. And knowing more about the green also means knowing more about how to roast it and better understand the flavors that we want to present to the judges. So naturally my attention started turning towards roasting um, through the, the barista competitions. And so that's where I got my first role um, as a roaster. Um, so the company I worked for was quite a large commercial company. We had a 60 kilo Petroncini and we were roasting approximately 10 ton a week um, on that roaster when I first started and it was all manual all hand scooping um, lots of physical lifting um, but I think for those of us again we're in that opportunity to learn a new skill so we all just embraced it um, but definitely in hindsight now and I definitely know things are improving now in the industry in the industry but definitely helping employers better understand how to set their workers up for success in the roasting room in particular by making it easier um, in terms of moving the green, loading, scooping, just general movement around the roasting room is definitely something that we need to keep on monitoring and improving um, quite a lot. Then um, with the company growing, it, then we had to get a 120 kilo roaster. That also then meant um, learning more intricate uh, processes in terms of management of a stock. So we had to embrace programs like SAP. So again, thinking about where I'd come from in terms of washing dishes, making pizza and pasta, now I'm you know learning how to better manage inventory um, using um, corporate basic basically corporate programs that you would would never have dreamt of you know potentially getting exposure to if it wasn't for this opportunity um, that I'd, I'd had to move into roasting so um, so my first role in roasting was pretty much jumping straight in in terms of um, not only having to learn the skill of roasting but really getting a chance to um, embrace um, team management and inventory management um, from a production and manufacturing perspective, which, which roasting is. Roasting is production and manufacturing. So then after that, that role, um, I had the opportunity to live and work in the US. And that was as a result of my husband being sponsored by Colgate. So he was working for them at the time. And head office for Colgate is in Manhattan. And the technology center is in New Jersey. So he got sponsored to work between both offices. And as a result, I was also able um, to, to be on the same visa and live and work in the US. So I was in New York um, for almost four years and had the opportunity to work for a company called Dallas Brothers Coffee. And initially when I first moved to New York, I actually panicked. I didn't think that I was good enough um, to be able to work in the US. And I definitely did the um, upskilling. So I did my Q graders um, and I still maintain that to this day, um, hoping that that would help, you know, get a foot in the door in terms of based on also my, my um, roasting experience from back in Australia. And I, not being the kind of personality to put myself out there, 
you we had to so I was definitely um, had to put myself out there in the sense of going to visit a lot of roasters um, going to events um, going along to cuppings so the only probably the, the one of the main reasons why I got my job at Dallas Brothers was because I went to one of their monthly cuppings and then at the end of the cupping did the old so let me help you clean up and um, by the way are there any jobs going here at the moment so again just you know taking the time to say hi introduce yourself get to know people so again really reinforcing the relationship aspect of the coffee industry and yeah if I had never have stopped to say to do what I did um, I would never have gotten the opportunity just to get an interview um, and to then eventually uh, end up with the roasting role um, at Dallas Brothers um, so by working at Dallas Brothers, a fabulous opportunity to then um, really put my Q graders um, to to work. So I was working alongside, um, also doing the doing the production roasting for the specialty program, but also working with the green bean buyer, and that meant doing all of the sample roasting, setting up all of the cuppings, and being involved in all of the the cupping and assessment and purchasing decisions um, with the green bean buyer. So fabulous opportunity to really get the chance to learn and roast so many different origins um, and also be involved with the um, the company's owners which was a Brazilian company um, which was O Coffee at the time so we got to go down to O Coffee every year um, work with the team there I did a lot of work and training with the roasting team that had, had, a, they had an amazing education center and roasting facility set up there so I got a chance to work with the, the main roast, the sample roasters that would be monitoring the coffee as it would, they would be regularly roasting samples as they came off the patio, um, just to start um, checking the quality um, and then start preparing samples for sale and, and go from there. So yeah, amazing opportunities to work with roasting from an origin perspective, which was really cool. And then um, also got involved um, with the Barista Guild and the Roasters Guild um, while I was at Dallas Brothers. So with the Barista Guild, I got a chance to dust off my competition tamper and I got involved in the barista competitions and competed at NERBC and did really well, came in the top six. And then as a result, that means you get automatic qualification to go to USBC. So here I am. 2013 standing at USBC in this massive arena um, yeah very overwhelming experience but absolutely fabulous and amazing because for an Aussie like me it was really cool putting lots of faces to names meeting so many amazing people um, so you know you'd be um, seeing all these you know people that you'd only ever read about in Barista magazine um, or you'd seen them on the internet and all of a sudden they're right next to you getting ready to compete with you um, so yeah amazing experience I definitely recommend if you have the opportunity to live and work in another coffee culture or country go for it um, highly recommend it it's fantastic and then also got involved with the Roasters Guild so um, I had a bit of a dream introduction to Roasters Guild with Dallas Brothers, um, especially by attending uh, my very first Roasters Guild retreat. And my very first retreat was fantastic because I was on the winning team for the team challenge. So of course that made the whole experience even more sweeter. Um, but that aside, um, still to this day, um, the people that I met at that very first retreat are still fabulous you know really good industry friends people that I know that I can um, reach out to for help at, at any point um, so again really reinforcing that you know that coffee is a relationship industry um, so since attending my first retreat I think it was like 2011 um, um, got a chance to get involved with the executive council before unification um, and doing a bit of work with the education committee so I still do a little bit of work and research um, with SEA um, where I've created some workshops where we still teach those at Expo every year. Um, but just yet yeah, again, um, the whole 
um, community with Roasters Guild is fantastic in the sense of, um, again, knowing you've got people to reach out to when you need um, any any advice and, and, and any help. So then, sadly, finishing my time in the US, came back to Australia and landed in Melbourne and um, did a bit of work with Proud Mary Coffee and Axel Coffee Roasters. But again, part of me, kind of like with my barista days, was feeling like I'd reached um, a ceiling in terms of what I'd achieved with my production roasting in particular. So I thought with my range of experience from specialty through to commercial roasting, I really felt confident that I was able to put myself out there as a trainer and consultant and help other roasters succeed um, with their roasting. And especially in Australia, with it being such a niche market with so many cafes um, and just a lot of thirst for knowledge and understanding about roasting. So it was just, a, um, it felt right. And it felt like the right thing for me to do was to start training with roasting. So five years ago now, I set up my roasting course. So once a month, I run what I call my awesome monthly roasting course, but ultimately the, the course is based around offering very good practical hands-on um, understanding of the roasting process. And again, recognizing that there's only so much you can do by reading the books, scouring the internet, posting a question on a forum, um, getting a truckload of different opinions when you can come along to this course and really give yourself a chance to, to really see roasting for what it is. So I'm a very big fan of, I don't sugarcoat the, the whole process. It's very clear. It's very upfront and it's exactly what you would be doing if you were, a, if you were doing production roasting. So, and regardless on whether you're, um, a complete beginner or really experienced, everyone's unified by that roasting exercise where we get the same coffee and we roast it three different ways because then along with those three different approaches comes specific data and parameters and decision making um, to help define those you know different types and style those different roasting styles so yeah so that's really fantastic and the the groups are always really small so you get plenty of hands-on practical time on the machines as well so it's yeah it's really fun so definitely something i've been quite passionate about um obviously yeah in the last five years is is that that roasting course and giving people a chance to get hands-on and really involved in the roasting process so they can make a better decision about do they want to forge ahead and step into the industry um, or if you're experienced, you may see something that you've never um, realized or you wanted to test a theory, but never had the opportunity to do that in your own roasting, in your own workplace. Um, and then when I'm not doing the roasting course, I then um, am working as a consultant, um, moving around Australia. I have some clients in the US as well. And so definitely in the last five years, I've been in hundreds of different roasting rooms. I've used hundreds of different roasting machines. And so I'm very spoiled in the sense that I've had that exposure um, and opportunity to use all of those different machines. And at the end of the day, um, from all of those different situations and all of the many different um, you know, opinions that are out there on how best to roast, um, we're all unified by the fact that we're roasting something to taste. Um, we are in the business of flavor and there's always an underlying decision um, that, that's backing that up. So that's what I wanted to offer for you guys is based on my own experience um, through my um, training and consulting and my own career experience as well is giving you some really great tips and tricks on how you can always frame yourself up for success while you're roasting. So the things we're going to focus on is definitely starting with knowing your green, um, then knowing your machine on your roaster, and then ultimately finishing with knowing your flavors. So thanks for listening. And you can learn a little bit more about me and see what I'm up to, um, whether it's on Instagram. So I'm Roastress Coops on Instagram. Um, my website is eqmr.com.au. And 
If you want even more from myself and Lee, you can definitely catch us in Portland where we'll be doing a two day workshop. And in particular, um, I'll be doing um, a really practical focus session on roast curves um, and roast uh, profiles in the sense of really helping us how to better understand how to interpret um, and even taste uh, the differences between um, various roast profiles um, and roast curves. So you can find that event at mapitforward.org and I look forward to seeing you for the next video. Um, I'll see you at the machine.